Hey folks, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. Today I want to talk a little bit about my used outboard motor buying guide, as I always do. It's for sale on Amazon for $20. If I'm offering this for a limited time, if you send me an email at Keith at OutboardDad.com with proof of purchase, I am offering a half an hour session over the phone. Got a lot of guys emailing me asking questions. Sometimes I don't even get them on the phone. We go back and forth with emails and that's enough to help them get back on the water. Now over here in New Jersey, it's January. There's still some diehard fishermen out there. Personally, I'm a fair weather, weather boater. September, my boat gets put away for the season and do maintenance work, work on other motors and have some fun tinkering around in the garage. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. And today we're gonna show you the tricks. Like I showed you some tricks with the seals, I'm gonna show you some tricks so that you can put together your disassemble, repair, and put together your lower unit and save thousands. So let's take a look at this lower unit casing. So if you've watched any of my videos, I usually say cleanliness is next to godliness, right? So what we gotta do here, if you take a look inside here, this is now spotless. I got in with um, wire wheels, I got in there with um, some um, scotch brake pads, cleaned it all up, flushed it, cleaned it, flushed it, cleaned it, flushed it. Some of the grooves where the snap rings go in, I got in there with a little bent screwdriver and scraped any corrosion out of it. So this is nice and clean now. So let me show you how we're going to put this back together. If you remember when we pulled out that prop shaft, right, we had to use a little puller on there, little homemade pullers that I came up with. If you have questions about that, let me know. I'll show you how to do that. There are threaded holes in here that you can thread rods into. And I have a, a couple of different Harbor Freight pullers. I use parts from one or another and tighten them down on there and, and pull these suckers right out. Worst comes to worst, you can always heat up the sides if it's really that bad. This is a 19, probably I'm going to say 92 maybe motor. And this came right out without a problem. So we're going to get some O-rings on here. Let's not forget to do that. So here's the O-rings, we line them up and we'll put them in place. Make sure we take the old one or the new one and not the old one. So we're just gonna put them in place here. I am gonna put some of that silicone on here when we put this together, but we're gonna hold off until we make sure everything is dry fit, right? So the O-ring goes right in there. I'm actually gonna take the O-ring back out now, even though I said I was gonna put it on because now I'm thinking as I'm talking and I'm gonna dry fit this, right? I wanna make sure this goes all the way in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in and make sure it goes, and it does say up on the top, and then there's a, a slot in the bottom, and make sure it's straight, it seats in all the way. I can look down from inside to see, to make sure it's seated in all the way. I can also tell by the markings and the paint where it was before, and it fits right in there. You don't wanna fight with this when you are putting it together, and try to crank because you're going to have bolts that go through here to meet up with the plate. I'll show you how that works. And you don't want to be fighting with it when you have the silicone on it and the silicone's drying on you. And that's also one of the reasons I like to use this Ford Motorcraft silicone because it doesn't dry too quickly. It gives me a little bit of working time. I know a lot of guys that will use the weather stripping adhesive and that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're that good, we get this right into place and you know it's locked in the first time and you're not fighting with it so much. Nothing wrong with that. Some guys just put grease on it and they don't put anything else on it. Personally, with older lower units that may have some pitting in the aluminum, I'm gonna use that silicone because I'm gonna have a better chance of a longer seal time. So, let me show you what we did with the prop shaft. Here's the prop shaft that we pulled out with the gears all intact. And we carefully wrap this up so it stays nice and clean, put nice new clean rags in it. What you have to be careful of also, you'll see there's a pin right here, slides all the way through the, to the other side, and this locks in our shift lever here. So we wanna make sure if that falls out, we have to make sure we put it back in the same way. So you just hold it in that place. That's why I wrapped the rag all the way around it so the pin doesn't fall out. And this is basically how we're shifting, right? That cog is gonna go back and forth from one gear to the other. You can see how it just popped up there. And if I pull it out the other way, if I can get it to move, it'll go back down and switch that the other way, right? So this fits in there. There's a pin right here. 
So there's a hole all the way in the back of the lower unit that that pin goes into. And there is also, see this pin here, and there's a slot that this slides into as we slide it in. Let me give you a closer look inside the bullet of the lower unit. If you look inside, you see on the lower right hand side there, you can see that hole where the pin goes in. And on the bottom, you can see the slot, right? And the slot is where that bottom pin goes in. That round piece goes and slides right in there. And you can see it's nice and clean. We made sure we cleaned up all of where the snap rings go in. You see there's two snap ring locations there, nice and clean, and we're ready to install. I want to take one last look inside here really carefully, looking deep inside the grooves, just making sure nothing fell inside there or something that's going to cause a problem. So again, we're going to hold our assembly the same way it came out, because if I tilt to one side or the other, this pin is going to come out. We're going to have a little more work to do to put it back together. So this assembly goes right back in. We did clean up with, an, with a um, Scotch-Brite pad where the seals go on here so that it's nice and smooth. We're going to try and keep it as upright as we can and it should slide into place. Now if I hit a little roadblock, doesn't feel like it's going into place, I can certainly look up top. And I can see the alignment of my shift shaft. And work it into place. So I'm going to show you from the top view here so you can see the alignment of that shift shaft. So there's our shift shift, or where our shift shaft needs to line up to be inside there. There we go, there's a little better picture of it. And you can see it's dead right in where it needs to go. I'm gonna slide it out a little bit so you can see. Oh, and now you can see it's right in place. Right now I can go ahead and take my shift shaft. We did clean up these surfaces here because we got a little grease on it when we put the new O-rings in. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down screw it in place. I wrote down on my bench here seven turns because that's how many turns before it came out. I like to keep it in the same place so it lines up with the shifter. You can adjust it later on your uh, cable. You can make a little bit of adjustment, but just get it back as close as I can. Now I'm going to put this in there more so just to get the shift shaft on there so as I'm moving things around, it's less likely to fall out of place. I am going to take my gasket and slide it over here and make sure I have that ready to go. I'm not gonna put any sealer or anything on it yet. Just gonna put it in there just to hold it in place while we're putting the drive shaft in. If you remember, we also wrapped up our drive shaft. We wanted to make sure it was gonna stay nice and clean. We also put the nut on there, so we're gonna go ahead and take that off. We also have the drive shaft gear that has to go in place, but this has to go down in place first. Now, if you remember, this is a two piece shaft, so it does wobble here. And sometimes people think there's something wrong with it because you don't know that until you pull it apart. So we're gonna get this down in place. Then we're gonna get the gear on here and then have to get the nut on there. So this is where it's gonna get a little tricky. Have to use some magnets to get it in place and then turn this just to get the thread started and then we'll get the wrench in there. So let's line this up first. Not too difficult, right? We can take our light, shine it down inside there. Let me show you what it looks like right now. So right now you can see that drive shaft coming down with the threads. So now we're gonna lift it up a little bit to get the gear in place. That's gonna get a little tricky because it's a very tight fit inside there. The rest of the parts that we took out are here. We made sure everything is nice and clean, right? We always, always wanna have it as clean as we possibly can. So we have the gear, this goes on the drive shaft, so we're gonna to have to slip that in there. In order to do that, we're actually gonna to have to pull this shaft out a little bit, see how it just dropped down. So that gives us just enough room to get it in there. Sometimes you have to put a little rod on here and give it a little tap, 
because it is a tight fit to get it back into place. Actually, I think I'm going to pull my drive shaft out first. I probably got ahead of myself putting that in and then we'll get this in place. Then we'll drop the drive shaft inside there. Then we have our other gear that goes in there, reverse gear, forward gear. I forget which one's which. If the one in the back is reverse, the one in the front's forward. I don't remember. When we turn the drive shaft, I'll be able to tell. And we do have some shims. We want to put the same shims that came out back in there. One of them does have a lot of rust on it, so I did get a replacement for it because you can buy those. Then we have our plate. If you remember, this plate is going to go in first. It does have a hole in it signifying the location where it needs to go. And the screws go into this. So once these go in, then our snap rings go in and the bolts go through. So this tightens up against the snap ring and holds our bearing carrier in place. So let's get our drive shaft out and get our drive gear in place. Can't seem to find my magnets right now to drop that gear into place. So we're going to get a little creative and we're just going to spin this in our vise a little bit. And let gravity help us out. So I can pull this back out and down, drop this down. It almost fell right into place, but we do have to give it a little tap to get it in there to rest it away. I'm going to work this back and drop it in there. I have the gear lined up where I want it to be and I have my shaft pushing down, so it really should just take a little tap. And it drops right into place. Now my shaft goes back into place. Now I can take my drive shaft, slide it in right into that gear, and there we go. Now we're gonna to have to work that nut into place. Now I'm gonna to need to get my magnet. Now when we look down inside, it's easy to see that the threads of the drive shaft are now sticking through. And if we spin the shaft now, we could see that it would spin that gear in the back. But now we just have to get the nut on there, which is a little bit tricky. I'm gonna hold the nut with a magnet, get it in place. I'm gonna back that drive shaft out just about the thickness of the nut so I can get it in there. And then I'll push my drive shaft in against that nut while I'm holding it with the magnet. Don't know if I can set up the camera to show that. I will do the best that I can to, to do that. And then I'll spin my drive shaft to get it started and then we'll tighten it up. What happens when you can't find your magnet? You have to make something up. So I just took a little clip, right? It doesn't go all the way into the threads. It's not a clip, it's an alligator clip uh, from a jumper wire, right? And I just put it on there so I can get it down inside there to hold it in place because I don't know where my magnet is. I used to keep it right here uh, hanging and I don't know where it is right now. But anyway, you get creative sometimes because you got to get things done and you figure out other ways to, to do things. So let's see if I can get my camera down in there so you can see me put this in place.